The effect of sucking habit is less favorable in vertical growth tendency than horizontal growth tendency is less favorable in horizontal growth tendency than the vertical growth tendency. Any of the above can be true or none of the above are true. Now in order to answer this question we first need to know what the effects of the sucking habits are clinically or what are the clinical features of the sucking habit. Right now, uh, this uh, habit of uh, thumb sucking or any habit in general, okay, it is going to cause malocclusion or the severity of the malocclusion that is going to develop because of this habit depends on three factors, okay, that is known as the trident of factors. The first one being the intensity, okay, that is the intensity with which the child is going to indulge in the habit. The second is the duration. Okay, how long the child is indulging in the habit. And third is the frequency. That is how frequently the child is engaging in this habit. Now in thumb sucking, there is another uh, factor which is involved. That is placement or the position of the thumb. Okay, because depending upon the position of the thumb, the uh, features that are going to be seen clinically, especially in the dentition are going to vary. But the common features or the classical findings which are going to be seen in thumb sucking are going to be in the skeleton. Okay, so this is going to bring about some sort of skeletal change in the dentition. Okay, and also in the soft tissues. Now the basic cause of these features or basic cause in the malocclusion is going to be because a a digit is going to be placed between the two jaws which is going to exert some amount of force okay now because there's going to be a placement of another digit between the jaws the jaws have to be open okay or they have to op uh, remain open so this is going to bring about a downward and backward rotation of the mandible so the mandible will be moved downward and backward or it will be in the open direction to allow the placement of this digit so this is going to cause an increase in the mandibular plane angle or it is going to cause an increase or opening up of the mandibular plane angle. Right? This is going to increase the vertical uh, growth tendency of the patient or it is going to increase the vertical dimension of the patient. Now this is one of the skeletal features which is going to be seen. If you see the direction of force that is going to be applied by the thumb, you will see that the pressure that is being created, okay, is going to move the maxilla in an upward and forward direction, okay, and the mandible in a backward direction. So, it is going to actually cause the downward and backward rotation of the mandible and an upward and forward rotation of the maxilla, which is going to accentuate any class 2 tendencies, right. This is going to bring about prognathism of the maxilla. Right, retrognathism of the mandible and also cause an increase in the mandibular plane angle. Okay, also in the maxilla, it is going to bring about some amount of narrowing of the arch. Okay, this is all this is because of the uh, buccal muscles which are uh, exerting forces on the dentition which is not being countered enough by the tongue, which causes a narrowing or a V shaped pattern of development of the maxilla. Okay, so the maxilla becomes narrow that again is going to cause a, a, a stunted growth of the mandible because of the foot and shoe effect. Okay, where the maxilla acts as the shoe and the mandible acts as the foot into which it fits. So if the shoe is only going to be smaller then the foot is not going to be, uh, not going to be able to enter inside. So this foot and shoe effect, okay, this again is important. They could probably ask you that again in the exam. Okay. So these are some of the skeletal features that we will see in the uh, as a is as a result or as an effect of the forces from the thumb sucking habit. Okay, in the dentition, what we will see is that there will be proclined upper incisors, right? Because of the force that is being exerted on the maxilla, the um, incisors are also going to procline, and they are going to flare. So we are going to see an increase in the proclination of the upper incisors. So we are going to see an increase in the uh, overjet. Because not only are the upper incisors proclining, the lower incisors actually either become upright or they start retroclining. Okay, because of the lingual tipping, because of pressure from the digit which is going to be uh, exerting force on these uh, lower incisors. Right. So, 
like here you can see this digit is going to exert force on this lower incisor so it's going to bring about retroclination of the incisors so this is going to increase the overjet right which is again something that we see in uh, class 2 there's going to be increased overjet also we may see the development of an anterior open bite Okay, why this anterior open bite develops is because of interference with the normal eruption of the incisors because a thumb or a digit is going to be placed between the teeth, right? So it's going to prevent the eruption of the anterior teeth and it could cause excessive eruption of the posterior teeth. So this could, uh, this could cause the development of an open bite. Okay, and uh, we'll all we may also see posterior cross bites developing like here in this situation because of the posterior cross by developing because of the narrow maxillary arch which is present because of the effect of the uh, cheek muscles onto it it may cause narrowing of the maxilla which will lead to the development of posterior cross bite so we will see proclination of the upper incisors proclination of upper incisors retroclination of lower incisors increased overjet anterior open bite and a posterior cross bite Okay, some of the soft tissue changes that we will notice, okay, is because the uh, digit is going to be engaged or it is going to be uh, sucked on, okay, there will be callus formation which may develop on the digits, okay, so something like this, you will see this callus formation that is developing. Now, this is important. It's a very important clinical finding which is there. So, they could also give you this as an image based question, okay. So, we will see deformation of the digits. There could be because of the uh, changes in the dentition such as an anterior open bite. We may also see speech defects such as lisping. Okay, And because of the proclination of the upper incisors to such a large extent, we may also see incompetency of the lips. So the lips may become incompetent. The upper lip may actually become hypertonic and the lower lip may become hyp uh, hypertonic. So there will be hypotonic upper lip and hypertonic lower lip okay so here you can see the upper lip is hypotonic okay there is incompetency uh, this is potential incompetency because the incisors are proclined and they are coming between uh, the closure of the lips right so the lips are not able to close because the upper lips are so proclined and you will see the lower lips because of the increase in the retrognathism of the mandible and retroclination of the incisors we will see that the lower lip actually becomes hyperactive and then hyperactive mentalis muscle so this puckering of the chin will also be appreciable okay so these are some of the clinical features we will see in thumb sucking habit now uh, as we saw that thumb sucking habit is going to cause or going to bring about increase in the mandibular plane angle because of a downward and backward rotation of the mandible okay now if there is already a vertical growth tendency in a in an individual then this opening up of the mandibular plane angle is going to worsen the prognosis so that is less favorable right then if the patient had a horizontal type of growth pattern which in which there is opening up of the uh, mandibular plane angle this can be tolerated better than if the patient already had a vertical growth pattern which is becoming worse right it's increasing so it's becoming worse so that is less favorable okay so the effect of the sucking habit is less favorable when there is a vertical growth tendency than a horizontal growth tendency because the patient who's already a vertical grower with increased mandibular plane angle or with increase in the vertical growth the uh, clinical effects or the uh, the it's going to become worse okay or the prognosis is going to become worse or less favorable than if the patient had a horizontal growth tendency some amount of opening up of the mandibular plane angle would still be acceptable 